Hello, welcome to Biograd TV. If you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. How the Republic of Congo got independence. The north of the Congo River came under French control in 1880 when France signed a treaty with King Makoko of the Bateke. This colony was first known as French Congo, then later as Middle Congo in 1903. Again on the 15th of January 1910, the colony was renamed to French Equatorial Africa, that is, Afrique Equatorial Francaise, or AEF. This time it also included Chad and present-day Central African Republic. Much later, it was known as Congo Brazzaville before it officially became the Republic of Congo. Brazzaville was designated as the federal capital by the French. France proceeded to get the natural resources of the region and used brutal methods to achieve their ends. It is believed that the construction of the Congo Ocean Railroad following World War I, for instance, cost about 14,000 lives. As was the case with most other countries under colonization, a sense of nationalism began to grow among the Congolese. One person who began to fight the system was Andre Matsua, who is considered the father of modern Congolese nationalism. Andre Matsua was born in 1899 in Manzakala. He attended the Catholic-run schools and later joined the French Customs Administration in Brazzaville in 1919 and soon after left for France, where he joined the French army to fight in Morocco. In 1926, he formed the Association des Originaires de la Efe in Paris. The purpose of the association was to help people from his region living in France. For this, he received the support of some sections of the French society such as the French Communist Party and elements within the Freemasonry movement. Things began to change when in 1929, his group also became active in Congo itself and began making some demands regarding how the colony was governed. That year, the French dissolved Matsua's association and he together with some of his friends were jailed and exiled to Chad. This led to riots and a campaign of civil disobedience against the French administration which lasted many years. He however escaped and made his way to France in 1935 where under a new identity he continued his political work. In spite of the harsh repression, he still showed some loyalty to France by joining the French army to fight the German invasion in 1940. However, he was wounded and later rearrested and sent back to Brazzaville. Back in Congo, on the 8th of February 1941, he was sentenced to work in labor camps for the rest of his life. He died in prison a year later under unclear circumstances. This led to the rise of the Machuanist movement, which continued to be active even after independence. After the death of Andre Machua, the most prominent Congolese politician until 1956 was Jean-Félix Chikaya, who was born in Libreville on the 9th November 1903. He was a member of the royal family of the Kingdom of Luangu. Chikaya, along with Ivorian leader Felix Hofe Baoni, founded the Resemblant Democratic African RDA, in 1946 and in 1947 the Party Progressist African. Chikaya became one of the first African leaders elected to the French Parliament on the 21st of November 1945. This brought him great prestige in his native country. However, Chikaya's influence began to drop as the country prepared for self-rule because he never strongly questioned French colonial rule. He continued playing a leading role in the country's politics only by aligning himself with his former enemy, 
the more radical Jackie's Opangold in the parliamentary elections of 31st March 1957. Before independence, the French administration and the Catholic Church were very uncomfortable with Opangold's radicalism and favored the rise of a priest politician, Faubert Yolo. The defection of George's Yambot from the African Socialist Movement, MSA, to Yolo's Union Democratique pour la Défense d'Interest Africains, UDDIA, served to help Yolo become Prime Minister in 1958 when Congo became autonomous. A revolt organized by Opangolt on the 16th of February 1959 resulted in clashes along tribal lines. The clashes were between southerners who were loyal to Yolo and people from the north loyal to the MSA. The riots were repressed by the French army and Opangolt was arrested, but not before about 200 people had died. Prime Minister Yolo then proceeded to hold the elections for which Opangolt had previously asked in vain. The parliamentary elections were won by Yolo convincingly. Finally, on the 15th of August 1960, after so many struggles, Fulbert Yolo led the Republic of Congo to independence and he became the first president of the newly independent nation. What have we missed out of this history? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.